what the Falcons do, rise up. Welcome to Rise Up Reactions, the show where we talk all things Falcons, NFL, Georgia sports, and in general sports news of the day. I'm your host, Dr. Lee Denning, lifelong sports fan. First off, congratulations to the Braves. Uh, we are now tied 1-1 one -one with the Phillies after a significant rain delay yesterday. Uh, Atlanta was pretty wet. Georgia in general was pretty wet yesterday. And still continuing today, it looks like just looking out the office window here. But uh, moving on, we did win 3-0 against the Phillies. So we have, uh, you know, have to win two out of the next three games in order to advance. Uh, and hopefully we do that. Uh, but anyways, what I want to talk about today is the Deion Jones trade. Now, a lot of Falcons fans are split on this one. You know, some people say, oh, heck, we got rid of our best talented, uh, talent on defense next to Grady Jarrett. Um, and then a lot of people are also the mindset of, no, he's hurt. He's worth too much money. He's, you know, we've got guys that are playing relatively well. And I'll go ahead and tell you, I fall into more of the second camp. We do have guys like Michael Walker who have stepped up. He got a little banged up in the Tampa Bay game. Uh, but Michael Walker has stepped up and been a huge player for us. Fourth round draft pick a few years ago. Um, so he's playing incredibly well. And he costs a fraction of how much we were paying Deion Jones to sit on the bench. Um, and then you also have guys like Troy Anderson, who we took in the second round this year. And I believe we also have, oh yeah, Rashawn Evans, former first round pick from Tennessee that we got in free agency this year. Probably He's looking very promising. Uh, we have a couple other guys there that are just depth pieces, but the inside, the interior linebacker position is, is pretty well covered for the Falcons in terms of depth. And there just wasn't any room for Dion going forward. Now, not to say Dion's not going to be a great player. We did trade him to the Cleveland Browns uh, for a sixth round 2024 pick. So really didn't get a lot out of him. Would have liked to have seen a, a bigger payoff for that, given that he was our former, I believe, second round pick uh, back in 2016. So, you know, a guy that we did owe a ton of money to. Uh, his contract was for four years, five, uh, five, sorry, fifty-seven million dollars with the Falcons. Uh, Thirty-four million of that was guaranteed with an eleven million dollars signing bonus. So they will eat up most of that. We do take a twelve million dollar hit this year, but we open up twenty-four million dollars. Uh, so actually, twelve million dollar next year. Uh, twenty-four million is opened up in the twenty twenty-four season. So again, it'll it'll hurt us a little bit next year, but uh, I think. What Terry Fontenot has done a good job of so far is recognizing uh, how players are progressing through either injury or through their career or whether they're getting up there in years and trading them or getting rid of them before we they basically have no value whatsoever or we have to cut them in free agency. Um, now, he's done incredibly well. If you talk about Julio Jones, yeah, it hurt to lose Julio and we're still paying him. But Julio has fallen off of a cliff the last two years. I don't regret having him off of the team with the lackluster production he's had. And the same thing with Matt Ryan so far. I don't regret him being gone from the team right now. It's giving us a chance to see what we've got in younger, cheaper quarterbacks. And we get to free up a ton of cap space next year because we take we took it all this year. So I'm, I'm pleased with how Terry Fontenot is ran, uh, managing the front office right now. I wanted to give him at least three to four years to see how we do. He is, again, the former Saints scout and was there for the majority of the time that Drew Brees was their, lead, uh, their leader on offense and they had shut down defenses. So he knows how to build a team. We just have to be a little bit more patient with him. Uh, but Deion Jones, man, I wish him so much luck here. So I wish him well going forward. Just going through his seasons real quick. As a rookie, he had, uh, let's see here, 15 games, 13 started. Uh, he had three interceptions and two of them run back for touchdowns. He had, let's see here, uh, da, 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 108 total tackles, no sacks in his rookie year, and just in general looked good. Uh, he was the... Uh, the AP Rookie of the Year, Defensive Rookie of the Year 3, uh, or ranked 3 in that position. 2017, another good year, 138 com uh, combined tackles, uh, one sack. And then, you know, 2018, he got hurt, a little banged up that year. He only played six games, so, you know, only 53 tackles, a little down year. 2019, uh, he ended up with 110 tackles. He did not have any sacks. Uh, and then to, uh, 2020 was his last real productive year with four and a half sacks, 106 total tackles. 
Uh, he had, let's see here, two interceptions that year, one return for a touchdown, and one fumble recovery. And then finally, 2021, last year, he did lead the defense in tackles because we couldn't stop anything. He had 137 tackles. Uh, he had two sacks. And in general, he looked like a good player. But again, he was not effectively commanding the defense. And he's now going into his seventh year in the league. Again, he's getting a little up there in years. He's only 27, but he has a lot of wear on the tires here. He's already had one season where he was significantly injured. And then he's had several lackluster seasons overall from a sack perspective, from a turnover perspective. And really, we just need some fresh blood. So... I'm okay with losing Dion. I hate to see him go, but I also think it opens up a lot of opportunity for us to bring in fresh faces and really revitalize our defense. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Dion, we wish you well going to Cleveland. I know that you're still on their injured reserve. You're going to be coming back sometime in the near future. Um, so I hope you do well. I hate that you went to a scumbag team, or rather a scumbag owner. I think the team itself overall is fine, but the, the owner is pretty much a scumbag, and so is the general manager for what they're paying Deshaun Watson. Um, but anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, I'm Dr. Day. If you like the video, consider liking it down below. Subscribe. It would really help the channel grow. And until next time, rise up.